All right, Keith, we're going to talk now about Newcastle United. Now, they're under pressure to qualify for Europe. Do you think they're going to be concerned about trying to keep hold of some of their star players if they aren't to qualify, if they fail to qualify for Europe? I think uh, a lot of their players will still be, be happy to stay with Eddie Howe. I think they don't see much turnover unless it's uh, something that both parties want. I think they're still buying into it. I think that Newcastle will come back with a stronger squad once injuries are fixed. I think they may add a couple of players as well. So, no, I really don't see uh, a big exodus of what they would call their star players um, unless their extortionate bids come in for them. But, no, I, th I think Newcastle are in a pretty solid position to go forward. Do you think most of them have bought into the into Eddie Howe's vision, to the club's vision? And, and you ex are you expecting most to stay? We might see potentially one or two outgoings, but you feel quite confident, actually, that the squad are going to sort of unite going into the summer transfer window. Yeah, that's my reading of it. Of course, agents are always agitating if they can get players away for, for great deals. But I think from what I'm seeing, the majority of the players there are very happy. I think Howe's done a great job of engendering that that team feeling. I think there's a great feeling on uh, on Tyneside. And so I think the players are enjoying the atmosphere and I think they're all happy there. Uh, I think they can see potential. They'll probably have European football, hopefully. Uh, and I think they can push on for next season. So now, I think they're the reason we settle as best as you can be, as I say, without agents agitating. Uh, you, you can never factor for that. But I think overall, I think they're as solid as they can be right now. Do you think potentially then maybe some bumper contracts could be sort of sort of handed out and, and some, some could be extended potentially to ensure that their big stars stay, the likes of, say, Alexander Isak or Kieran Trippier? Uh, I think Isak may be the first on that one. I think Trippier... Um, we'll wait and see if that was really going to be a priority on the top of the list. Uh, they've also got to keep one eye over their shoulder about PSR as well. So they've got a certain, you know, a certain limit that they've got to manage within. So they'll be quite selective. I think they'll look at the age of those players. They'll look at the squad in general. But overall, if they get them fit, and they have suffered immensely from injuries this year, if they get that squad fit, there's still a very strong squad there. So uh, I think they should be okay. Talking of, of stadiums, Keith, Brighton boss Robert De Zerbi, Roberto De Zerbi said St. James's Park is the best stadium in the Premier League. What do you make of, of that statement? And do you agree with him from an atmospheric point of view, um, from, a, from a fan's enjoyment point of view? Where, where do you stand with that? Who? Oh, it's uh, St. James's. Look, I've always enjoyed St. James's. I wouldn't call it the greatest stadium in, in Britain. It's always been a very good atmosphere. But then again, I've experienced it when it hasn't always been full. Uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago when St. James wasn't rocking like it is right now. Uh, so it's also, I've always thought, a bit of an odd shape with different stands here and there and uh, a, a different type of feel to it. Uh, no doubt though, its location, the city centre adds to it. I, I love the Geordie people and uh, the whole atmosphere in the stadium around that. But uh, in terms of atmosphere, it's up there, but I don't think it's the best. Uh, and so I think a new design of St. James's Park with an with not an enclosed roof, but if you like, all the the roof that's balanced together uh, would make a big difference. And I think would make it a real cauldron. I think that could make the difference. And I think that's what they're aiming for. From some of the artists' impressions I've seen, that would be a superb addition to the Premier League if they can get that uh, finalised. Similar to the city ground, Keith, is it vital they do stay at St James's Park and don't look at moving away? Effectively trying to work out any potential option or solution to sort of solve the issue that you've just mentioned about the stadium. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, look, I, I am a big fan of, of, of Grand staying in the city uh, if possible. I had the unfortunate experience with Everton. We tried to move to Kirby, uh, which would have been away from a city centre. So here I am being hypocritical. Uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, that was done because there was really no other option. And it was not a preferred option at the time. Believe me, we tried to stay, find a site in the city which wasn't available at the time. Uh, so I would like to be in the city. I think there's a lot. And I think football and a town becomes synonymous and I think while there is no franchise model as I've said to move people around then I think it's important that connection remains within the city and it helps families it helps everything work very well and a strong football club is a heartbeat of any community and I think having them that available for public transport etc makes a big difference and uh, it helps the economic impact as we discussed earlier. And Keith, from a revenue point of view, do you think staying in the city as well, again, like we've sort of discussed, will will continue to benefit, given that we've sort of discussed in previous weeks that Newcastle are likely to become a, a global superpower? How exciting and and, and how, um, we'll do that again. 
Keith, from, the, from an owner's point of view, how exciting is it for the revenue of the city and the club that actually in a few years to come, Newcastle could become a global superpower? It's very important. Um, I think I've mentioned once before, but when Everton, we, I took Everton away to Thailand where our sponsor Chang was located. But we also tried to make it into like a mini um, a, a mini tour for businesses from Merseyside that could go with us and try and sell their products over there as well. So there's a massive impact that this can make. Uh, and certainly I know Newcastle playing Spurs in Australia soon. If that was tied into a trade mission as well at the same time, it can have fantastic impact on the, the local community. So when owners start thinking big, and they start doing those sort of uh, you know, calculations and what they can bring into the community, and they actually help uh, pioneer those sort of initiatives, uh, then you know they become invaluable to the region. And uh, there's no reason why that can't happen. The success of the Premier League does mean that uh, when a club comes there, they get unreasonable attention. And so if other, other businesses can get off their coattails and get new contracts as a, re as a result of that, then what a fantastic outcome for football. And, uh, you know, what a, what a great reason to see the government support the Premier League as much as possible in trying to get things right. And how long do we anticipate the, the sort of regeneration of... Sorry again. Keith, how long, how long do you think it will take Newcastle potentially to renovate St. James's Park? Would it be a three to five year plan? Would they be looking even longer than that? What will the owners be saying, do you think, at this current moment in time? I think you're right with the, the the first thought. I think three to five years would try to be the uh, the case to get it done. It'll probably take a, a year of planning, uh, probably another year of getting approvals and everything uh, ready to go, and then around about you know two years to actually execute uh, and allowing for overruns. You're into the three to five year period. So yeah, I think it's going to be around that sort of time realistically to make it work. But again, fans are understanding. They will have seen the artist's impression of where we're trying to get to with the end of it. So they'll be patient. Uh, and I think they'll know that the prize is worth it at the end. And then hopefully that will also improve the resources for the club to go ahead and provide that on-pitch product, which is the whole name of the game.